tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the initial broadcast of Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. I'm Tita Gracie, Gracie Venezuela, and uh, I represent the South Station of the 81 Radio Worldwide. Truly, this Easter is uh, going to be a new birth, a new beginning for V81 Radio South Metro Manila because this is the initial broadcast of our South Station and I'm very glad to be part of it. Yes. Well, for the benefit of our audience, we'd like to tell you that uh, uh, Let's Chat with Tita Grace is the pioneer program of V81 Radio South Manila. So we'd like to give you a raise and applause being the pioneering program and anchor of V81 South Manila. Thank you so much and I couldn't think of two better guys to be with me giving me the confidence and the impetus to move forward we've worked we both all three of us have worked on several projects in the past and this is going to be a breakthrough event not just for for me but for V81 South Station as this is the initial telecast uh, and broadcast of our South Station here in Metro Manila the burden now of filtering information is on the shoulders of, of the, the viewer yeah, right. they, they, you know, now, now they have to have rules and they have to have some training to filter out what is fake news, what is conjecture, uh, what images have been processed and just stolen from somewhere else. Right. Um, because even, even traditional media, they, they have their own agenda sometimes. They, sometimes they do things with malice uh, beforehand. So there's really going to be that, that, that need uh, to train uh, audiences, and that's one of the things I've been trying to do on social media and in my column in the Philippine Star, is basically to tell people, do not react, respond. In other words, take action, okay. find out, is this okay. a legitimate source? Uh, wh where did the information come from? Who said it? When was it said? Uh, yeah, I, what, uh, where did this news come from? Uh, what's the, the person's agenda in, let's say, spreading that news or posting it on social media? Uh, the, other, the other thing is what what is your reaction to it? Why would you want to pass it on? Why would you want to spread that news? Uh, I think these are the questions that people are not used to asking themselves uh, before they you know, click something to to watch it again or share it with uh, whoever. You know, there's a, a lot of us really are in the vernacular KFP, no kulang sa pansin. And uh, social media has given a soapbox to everybody, even though they don't really need it or don't deserve it. So for me, the what I tell people generally is find out, find out, corroborate the source of the information. When was it posted? For all you know, it could have been something three years ago in another country and it was just, you know, falsely, uh, you know, posted as if it were from our country. So these are the things that you have to look out for. I mentioned earlier, the responsibility now is a lot on the viewer. You know, um, it is so easy to mislead a lot of people, it is so easy to cause panic. It is much more difficult to really struggle and learn this craft because it is a craft. You know, it is something that uh, some of us have taught ourselves over the span of how many years. It is something that we take very seriously. It is something that we want to use for the betterment of people, you know, not to sow panic or discord, and then not to make people wonder or be uncertain about their future. So. I think uh, now what we have to do as media practitioners, as those who know the rules of the game, to spread and to disseminate the rules. You know, this is how you handle it. This is how you put a story out there. Because uh, even within our own field, you know, it's hard because there are people who, are, you know, let's be frank, don't function with the same rules that we do. Um, many years ago, I got hands. Now that's a tremendous difference. Before, it was just with the major companies that could broadcast. Yes. But now, everybody with a cell phone can broadcast anything that they want. And uh, there are advantages because of the speed, especially during the time of disaster. Like when Taal Volcano erupted, within minutes, people yes. were relying on social media to get their information. And the same goes for this pandemic, uh, which I think solidifies the new normal in terms of disseminating information. But aside from that, okay, the, the, that is where a lot of fear mongering happens. Yes, yes, yes. And the fear mongering and the fear mongering is basically because of ignorance. 
because they yeah. are not sure of what they are consuming. They are not sure of what they're hearing. But then again, they don't know how to vet the information. Are they still going to listen and watch traditional media? If they have already been burned or they think they've been burned or their biases do not permit them to believe the digital media, where does that leave them? So it goes back yes. again to what they trust. Go ahead. Yes. Um, and, and you, the gap. There is definitely now a tremendous gap between the national and the grassroots dissemination yes. of information. And in times like this disaster or crisis period, it becomes imperative for a bridge, for a bridge to cover those gaps. And like it or not, social media has become that bridge because everybody has their mobile phones and they're online 24 seven. So managing the digital communication platform is now very, very important. And you, know, you and I know that before in universities, and I don't know how far the academe has caught up in terms of training our communicators, um, I, as a com arts uh, student, we were a, a very well versed in production for mainstream media, but for the digital discipline, for social media management, it now is going to be, if not going to take over some aspects of mainstream media, primarily because it's delivered to every person directly. And that is powerful. You don't anymore have that time lag. You can you can share information, whether uh, to a specific geographic area or globally, should you wish to, in a flash because of the technology um later on we're gonna go into the technology issue technology the information playing field was leveled so now everybody is a critic everybody who knows photoshop is an art director everybody who knows who has microsoft word can be a writer or thinks himself a writer everything has been democratized you can write anything can feature anything, post anything. But what's valuable to us as marketers is there is such a thing, there is a strat that we, that we call social media listening. It's not just monitoring, huh? Because monitoring is what they're saying. But social media listening is finding out the root of, you know, the reason why they're saying such things on social media. And that's actually very important because then you capture nuances you look out for meaning behind words or you look for the you know what's the what's, what's the what's the general uh conception the general feeling of people it's it's your pulse it's your deep stick so even if stay tuned for the next episode only here on z81 radio manila